all those projects are transformative projects that are, might, you might call them catalytic projects. Uh, develop, for example, I've done a lot of work with uh, media cities, the development of new media cities, uh, both on sort of, I should say, brown fields, <laughs> not really green fields, new cities, but also the redevelopment of older cities uh, to, to uh, accommodate or to attract 21st century industries such as media. It could also be green tech, it could also be biotech, it could be um, uh, digital production. There are a whole series of new industries that are emerging due to the transformation of our economy to digital uh, production. It's all part of a continuum. I started with the redevelopment of industrial sites for historic cities like Lowell. Uh, in fact, Lowell was my thesis at MIT and uh, later it was completely transformed um, as a national park uh, and to move from the, a place of the highest unemployment in the U.S. Uh, in, the, in the late 70s, early 80s um, to a national monument uh, which attracts probably 800,000 people a year. So that has attracted new industry but it's also attracted um, advanced industry into the old three, four million square feet of old mill space that are in the city. Now it hasn't solved every problem in Lowell, but this has helped the city to move into the new economy. So I got involved uh, with industry in cities and the transformation of cities by looking at historic industrial cities and what their future would be. And I, I've done plans for, <laughs> for mill towns and steel towns, Johnstown in Pennsylvania, for uh, ports, for uh, coal mines, coal regions, any in industry you can think of, I probably have developed plans for uh, in, during my, my career. But that got me very interested in the relationship between people, culture, media, and the place. Because in the end, um, economic development of a city is in the past was based on your natural um, your, your natural advantages like Boston was a port or Lowell had, a, had falls to develop power uh, but those things are not so important anymore so how do you move these cities from what they used to be into an information economy and now into an innovation economy and when you think about it that way, it is the story of the place, it is the narrative of the place, which actually becomes the economic asset. And in, in Lowell's uh, 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 situation, for example, it, there was one image of it as a declining industrial city, uh, you know, failed industrial city. Now the image is uh, as a cornerstone of American history, of, of blue collar labor, of of how we transform the frontier into a productive society. And that has made a lot of difference in investment. So if you move that forward <laughs> into today, uh, what, you, what you see is transformations for new industries in the 21st century. Now, what is, I mean, a lot happened in between. One of the things that happened in between was in the, in the 20th century, City planners were all about throwing industry out of the city, moving it away from the city. It was dirty. It was, uh, you know, required huge floor space and integrated assembly. So it was deliberately moved to the suburbs. Okay, that's that's fine. But of course, people followed <laughs> the industry to the to the suburbs, right? Uh, and we were left with cities and downtowns that were really not production oriented. They were consumption oriented. So the way to get people into the city, you thought it had to be shops and, uh, you know, shopping and entertainment and culture and all that's great. But a city without production isn't making anything. And what we're finding now is with the digital economy and new kinds of production, uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, you know, digital fabrication, biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, green tech, media, 
Uh, these industries are all very clean and they're returning now to the city.